Why did I miss I that? I wasn't quite there. I think I had ancestors that were there, though. Mm. Proclaimed, not discovered. Yeah, proclaimed, yeah. Hey. <laughs> In James, no, all right. Watch it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we talk about music now, and uh, heavy metal music really commands a very loyal and often fanatic audience, particularly with teenage boys. But it has its detractors. Music critics uh, describe heavy, heavy metal music as uh, unlistenable, overwrought trash. Others, especially some parents, have uh, blamed it for encouraging teenage pregnancies, drug addiction, Satan worship, even suicide. Now, one of heavy metal's top sellers, Megadeth, is currently in this country on tour. Let's have a look at the Megadeth band. Joining us this morning, Dave Mustaine and David Ellefson join us from Megadeth. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank How you. are you? Hey. How you doing? It's great to have you in the program. It's hard to get rock and roll guys up this yeah. early in the morning. <laughs> we stayed up all night. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, we actually get up this early sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. You have surprised Go to the me. gym, we're like healthy boys, you know, do those kind of things. Hmm. Uh, you heard my intro about, um, uh, well, heavy metal music. It does get a lot of flack, but mind you, rock and roll's been copping flack since Elvis. Even, you know, uh, Bing Crosby uh, copped flack. Elvis did a lot of them. Why is it particularly heavy metal music cops it, Dave? I mean, heavy metal is, is the more radical form of what a lot of people consider rock and roll. You know, I don't really consider Megadeth to be a rock and roll band, you know. It's like we do a lot of things in, in our music. It's just, a, a lot of it, I think, is just the actual sound. You know, it's very loud, distorted guitars, and, and it's, it's very brash. And, um, you know, I, I, and, and unfortunately, in a lot of heavy metal, there's sometimes a lack of musical talent, you know. In our band, we try to really, like, take that a step further and actually, like, write real songs that can have some meaning. But yeah. talking about meaning Megadeth, just the title uh, does not instill a lot of uh, warmth in humanity. You know, parents say, hey, Megadeth, why do these guys call themselves Megadeth, David? Uh, well, if you look at it, we dropped the A out of Megadeth so that, it, I mean, on face value, it's, it's the way that it's spelled phonetically. Also, we wanted it to, to represent, you know, as, as much talent without being linked with the, the necrosis facet of heavy metal. Everybody in heavy metal is all talking about death and gloom and all that kind of stuff. But you're saying mega death. <clears throat> yeah, it's more along the lines of uh, the nuclear fallout, the hypothetical body count of a, it's a, a million deaths. We're not saying that, you know, we're going to have a million dead fans there, but we just wanted it to represent the utmost heaviest, ultra-furious band that we could possibly make. Yeah. You have to admit that uh, when the guys from Guns N' Roses swear at record presentations and that sort of stuff, it gives the heavy metal, if you like, genre a fairly bad image, which maybe it doesn't deserve, but it does happen, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that, you know, in, in, in rock and roll in general, a lot of it is all about rebellion. A lot of it is just to yeah. kind of like go out and prove what a, what a social reject you can be, you know? And I think that, that, that it's, in our case, with our band, that's not what we're all about. Well, you know? what are you Just about? because our hair is long doesn't mean that there's nothing <laughs> under here, you know? But and in the songs, I mean, what's your philosophy of songs? I mean, the group's name is Megadeth. I know you've explained it as sort of a nuclear fallout thing, but I mean, what approach and responsibility do you take to your fans? I think we're kind of uh, freeing the oppressed with uh, a lot of a lot of the things that we get, you know, put down for. I think that literacy in our band, especially, is a little bit higher than most bands in this genre. Um, you know, the fact that a lot of heavy metal bands get associated with drug addiction, you know, that's obvious because a lot of people who take drugs, and not just in heavy metal. I mean, a, a lot of every walk of life, you know, there's drugs and alcohol, and alcohol is a drug. I think that. Um, well, how? Where do you stand on that? Uh, I'm completely sober. Nothing There's a couple of very clear-eyed yeah. mm. boys here this morning. Sorry, yeah. 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 I mean, so the band would never do songs about drugs or that would even no, we, um, we insinuate do. or encourage kids to do drugs or alcohol? We have a couple songs. In fact, one song off of our, our previous album, To Rest in Peace, off So Far So Good, So What, there's a song called 502, which is uh, one of the, uh, the ordinance codes in, in California about getting pulled over for drunk driving. On this album, there's a song called Poison is a Cure, which is a paradox about how I used to think that drugs and, and alcohol would make me feel better, and in fact, it was killing me. Mm. Yeah, I, so. you know, it occurs to me that, uh, I mean, in my youth, 
uh, one of my favourite bands was was Led Zeppelin, and they were accused at the time of being very loud and very aggressive and satanic, and, uh, all, that yeah, satanic mm -hmm. all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it just goes on through the ages. Do you really think that your style of music is almost a release for teenage boys? In other words, a way to get some of that latent young aggression out of them. It's kind of yeah. like a lot of people that don't understand it are afraid of it, therefore they put it down. You know, yep. and I'm not saying that, that that hey, we don't write songs for parents, so it's only for the kids anyway. Because mm -hmm. it's Megadeth music is for anybody who wants to listen to it, and there is no such thing as a as a typical Megadeth fan. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think that really that's it in a nutshell. People that just don't understand it, they're afraid of it. You know, and when uh, people are afraid of something, they tend to like you know say ah oh, yeah, that's oh that's, well. I mean, as Kerry pointed out, I mean the people were afraid of Elvis Presley in yeah. 1956. Mm -hmm. But it's good to hear that uh, at least there's a philosophy in there which is anti-drugs because you uh, you guys have so much control over teenagers who are so impressionable. It's nice to, uh, as Tim's pointed out, to see some clear-eyed guys who can get up in the morning <laughs> mm. uh, and put sentences all together with full stops and commas. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think they're a little worried before we came in here. They're like, make sure you're up, make no. sure you're happening. And it's like, yeah, Mate, you, you know. would be surprised with what we've walked through the yeah, studio from time <laughs> to time. Had some experiences. <laughs> it has been a real ple pleasure. Yeah, uh, all the very best on the tour. Thank you. Thank you. Good yeah, on you. Good Dave uh, Mustaine and David Ellipson joining us on this, uh, this program on Good Morning Australia. Megadeth, they're touring the country. News and weather coming up next and then Charlton Heston in hot water over the Gulf War.